Hare Krishna. <clears throat> Welcome all of you for today's session. Uh, the topic for today's discussion is understanding Maya's trap. <clears throat> all of us agree that we are in Maya's trap. हम लोग बोलते हैं कि हम लोग माया जाल में फंसे हुए हैं सो टुडे सेशन इज ऑल अबाउट अंडरस्टैंडिंग व्हाट इज दिस माया सेकंड, हाउ डू वी गेट ट्रैप्ड व्हाट आर द वेरियस ट्रैप्स लेड आउट बाय माया देवी विच इज एनर्जी ऑफ द लॉर्ड एंड थर्ड हाउ डू वी सेफ when there are traps it's important that we remain protected we safeguard ourselves so we will try to understand these principles based on the teachings of bhagavad gita <clears throat> so we'll start with prayers request all of you to kindly join me in offering these prayers you can fold your hands and if required you can chant these prayers along with me otherwise just fold your hands and be with me uh, till the completion of these prayers nama om vishnu padaya krishna prishtaya bhutale shrimate bhakti vedanta swamin niti namine नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चातिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंदीअद्वैत गाधरा Shivasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Namo Mahavadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gaur Tushe Namaha Namo Brahmane Devaya गो ब्राह्मण हिताय च जगदिताय कृष्णाय गोविंदय नमो नम हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधु दीनबंधु जगतपते गोपेशा गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाचा कल्पतरूभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ पतितना पाभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नमः हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो द डिस्कशन इज ऑन माया Krishna in the Gita says Devi hi esha gunamai mam maya dhurataya mam maya mam maya means my maya shakti generally maya is regarded as some kind of a villain some kind of a energy which is pulling us which is trapping us which is entangling us but in this verse krishna is saying mama maya it is my energy on one side 
we understand that Lord is our loving Father. He is very kind, He is very merciful. The other side, we get to understand that there is an energy of that loving Father which is trapping us, which is entangling us, which is binding us, looks some kind of a contradiction. Loving Father trying to entangle His children. So what is this Maya Shakti? So in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Devi Esha Guna Mai, this is my energy, Mama Maya Dhuratya. Dhuratya means it's very, very difficult to surmount. It is very difficult to come out of the traps of this Maya, which is my energy. And then the next line, Krishna says, Mam Eva Ye Prapadyante, if you surrender to me, Mayam etam tarantite. I will free you from this illusory energy. So, what is Maya? It's comprised of two words. Ma means not, ya means this. Another word of Maya means illusion. For example, what is a uh, Example of illusion which all of us are aware of, if not seen, at least we have read in our textbooks. Mirage in the desert. It looks like many of us while we are driving on highways would have also noticed, especially on summer days, it appears that there is some kind of water simmering on the road. Or in the desert, it appears that there is some kind of a desert, some kind of a water. And in deserts, there are animals who, when they are thirsty, when they are moving around in search of water, they fall in this trap of mirage. It appears to them that there is water body. It looks like water. They run to that apparent water body. And they find that there is no water there. But still, that illusion is not over. Because they are thirsty and because they are in search of water, there is a promise of water way ahead. The goalpost changes. And they again start running behind that mirage thinking that it is water. And this goes on. No doubt sometimes animals are intelligent, they can figure out that it's an illusion, there is actually no water. But sometimes animals, if they don't realize this trap, can keep running in search of water and eventually may even die out of thirst. So likewise, there are many examples of Maya. Maya means that which is not. We all are pleasure-seeking beings. It is not wrong to seek pleasure. Anandamayo Bhyasat. Goal of spiritual life is not to become inert and have no desires, seek no pleasures and just engage in tapasya, austerities, penances, and then aim for moksha. No. There is a positive pleasure, a genuine pleasure, which we all are entitled to experience and pursue. But unfortunately, under the influence of maya, maya means that which is not, there are some pleasures in this world which looks like it will make me happy. Some sense objects for the eyes, the forms, for the ears, some beautiful melodious sounds, for the skin, some sense objects in the form of pleasurable touch sensations. There is a promise of happiness. 
and under the influence of Maya, since we are pleasure seeking beings, we pursue those pleasures with the understanding, with the hope that I will be fully happy, fully satisfied. Now, because it is maya, it is not real, it is illusion. There are many pleasures in this world which appears to be the source of happiness, source of lasting bliss. But Krishna in the Gita says, because it is under the influence of maya, those very pleasures which we pursue in the hope of being happy, those very pleasures become the source of our bondage and entanglement. I will give you a few examples from the animal kingdom. A fish, when a fisherman goes to catch fish, we all have seen, some of us may have also done some kind of fishing. A fisherman generally goes with that fishing rod. It has a thread with a hook in front of it. And the fisherman knows the psychology of the fish, knows what the fish likes, what will entice the fish. We call it bait. So the fisherman puts a bait in, on the hook and puts that hook in the water and the fish thinking that this bait is going to be source of pleasure for me going to quench my or other uh, you know, fishes maybe in search of food is going to make me happy the fish without knowing that there is a hook behind that bait goes and catches hold of that bait and in the process gets trapped. Mind you, the fisherman had very intentionally planned the whole thing. The fish goes for this bait, thinks that it will become happy, will satisfy its hunger, but that very object which is going to be source of pleasure for the face becomes the cause of its death. It seems that deer, you know, because they jump and move very fast, it's very difficult to, uh, <clears throat> to catch them. And a hunter who goes for hunting in the forest and wants to catch a deer, they generally know that the weakness of the deer is melodious sounds. So it produces some melodious music. It seems that the deers helplessly get attracted to that music, come completely become dazed and stunned hearing that music and just sit like ducks hearing that music. The hunter comes and can shoot them without any chance for deer escaping. So here we have an example of Melodious music, melodious sounds, which is very enticing for the deer. It is also seeking pleasure, but that very pleasure becomes a cause of death for the deer. Another example is given of an elephant. Untamed elephants, male elephants, wild elephants. Now, it is not possible for a human being who is much smaller in size compared to an elephant to catch hold of that element and elephant and tame it. So what they do is they have some trained female she elephants and they somehow go past this male elephants, rub the skin of the male elephants, gets agitated and then pursues, starts moving behind, starts chasing this female elephant. And because this female elephant is trained, she actually passes on a way where the trap 
a very big huge pit covered with green grass is already laid out and because the she elephant is trained she passes by the side of the pit knowing very well where the pit is and the male elephant helplessly pursuing or walking behind this female elephant gets trapped falls into that pit and gets trapped so our scriptures say that in the animal kingdom each of these animals which i mentioned about three examples i so far shared there is one sense which is very very prominent like for example deer the sense of hearing for fish the sense of eating the tongue and for elephant the skin rubbing the skin by a female elephant so in this animal kingdom we have examples of animals where one sense being prominent that very sense becomes the cause of death of that particular animal our scriptures say that in human form of life we don't have one sense which is a cause of trapping us the five senses in one sense each of these five senses are compared to wild horses each of them trying to pull the chariot in different directions and here this example which is given of a chariot driven by five horses it's important for us to understand the five horses represent the five senses the chariot is being driven by the chariot driver using the horses the horses are being controlled using the reins the reins in this example is in this analogy represents the mind the chariot driver represents our intelligence and the passenger in the chariot represents the soul now imagine a chariot in which five horses are there all the horses are untamed unruly each one pulling in different directions and the reins the chariot driver has lost control over the reins that's why people have hypertension high blood pressure anxiety attacks depression because mind is not fully in control and the intelligence which is supposed to control the mind is weak it has lost the power of discerning choosing between right and wrong making the right choices and the soul who is like a passenger in the chariot is completely bewildered actually that's the state of practically all of us in this material world we want pleasure we are seeking pleasure we are pleasure seeking beings but we think that under the influence of maya we think that we are this body the senses when they come in sense objects it will give me pleasure and because when the senses come in touch with the sense object there is some pleasure sensations thinking that these pleasure sensations will make me happy will make me satisfied we pursue those engage our senses with the sense objects more and more how we can maximize those sensual pleasures those sensations now it seems that there's nothing wrong what's wrong in seeing some beautiful objects what's wrong in hearing some melodious music what's wrong krishna in the gita says ye hi samsparsh jab hoga this very enjoyment samsparsha samsparsha means that enjoyment which we experience by senses coming in contact with the sense objects samsparsha 
bhoga bhoga means enjoyment that very enjoyment dukha yona hi evate is the cause of misery so again it's a contradiction that pleasure is the cause of misery so in other words krishna is saying those pleasures are not real pleasures under the influence of maya maya that which is not we think that those pleasures are the source of real bliss real contentment real joy real happiness and we try to maximize those pleasures we pursue those pleasures we set goals we have aspirations we lead our lives thinking that this will make me happy and those very pleasure becomes the cause of my bondage cause of my distress cause of my anxiety and eventually the cause of my death so maya that which is not now what is krishna says it is my energy now why krishna has created this maya energy why krishna has created this illusion why that illusion so to say we get trapped in that illusion before we get into that as i mentioned maya is energy of the lord for example even in our country or in a city let's say in a city there's a municipal corporation like here we have bmc in mumbai it runs many many educational institutions it provides education for the welfare of students citizens the same municipal corporation may also run a police chowki or a police station i don't know the whole structure who runs what but nevertheless every city has a police station or let's say government runs a police department the same government which is running an educational institution to provide education to deserving citizens to children the same department also invests money resources land in running a police department running a prison house in fact it spends money government servants are there who are also engaged in administration in the police department they are paid salaries and the people who are in the prison house they also taken care of there's lot of expenses which are involved in the whole thing so the government is not wrong in fact it's justified that yes although it's meant to serve the citizens to provide various amenities it's not wrong on the part of government to also have a prison house to have a jail because as we all discussed last time in the last session the previous session there will be some citizens who will disobey the laws who will break the laws who will commit crime and they need to be so to say kept aside kept aloof so that they don't disturb the normal citizens law abiding citizens they don't create nuisance in the society and they also given various kinds of punishment with the hope that they will get reformed and come back to the mainstream society so we have come in this world we want to enjoy independent of the lord yes this world is created an opportunity is given okay be enjoy be an enjoyer try to enjoy but because it is not our constitutional position for example many houses we have maids and servants they are employed 
and they have a particular role to play. They are servants. They cook food or they engage in various activities to serve the master. That's how they have been engaged in. That's the role what they have been engaged for. For example, a person who is employed as a cook, he cooks. The meal is served to the master, whosoever is the lead member in the house. In Hindi we call Malik. This is just a crude analogy. And after the master has partaken the meals, the servant can take the meals. We generally don't expect the servant cooking as per his wish and enjoying the meal even before serving the master. This is not a normal scenario. It's not expected of a servant. The servant is made or rather is expected to make the dishes or cook things based on the requirement of the master and after the master is satisfied, he takes the remnants. So here in this material world, we have come to become masters. Although constitutionally, we are servants. So when a servant tries for master, he is heading for trouble. He forgets that he is a servant, then he is heading for a problem. So same way we have come in this world, we want to enjoy forgetfulness, forgetfulness of Lord, thinking that I am the enjoyer, I am the proprietor, I am the well-wisher and that mentality becomes the cause of our bondage. That becomes the cause of our entanglement. Maya Shakti, illusion. Because unless we forget our real position, so Maya Shakti makes us forget that I am servant of the Lord. And I take the position of master, of enjoyer. Try to maximize my enjoyment independent of the Lord. Pursue various sensual pleasures. And in the process get entangled or completely, so to say, come under the clutches of Maya. So that's why Krishna in the Gita says, Devi Esha Gunamai, this Maya... Mama Maya Dhurattaya. For a person to come out of this Maya or illusion, it's not easy. Most of the people don't even understand that they are in Maya. Don't even understand that we are completely entangled, we are completely bound. We are in illusion. So first step when we start pursuing spiritual life, start reading Gita, the first thing which will dawn on us is that we are in Maya. Getting out of Maya, it takes time. It's a long process. Again, it depends on how sincerely we practice the spiritual principles. To that extent, we can experience relief from the entanglements from Maya. <clears throat> Now what role Maya plays? I gave example of just like in a city you have a prison house. There are also amenities like educational department, like hospitals, like schools and so many other things. So this Maya Shakti can also be compared to an examiner. Maya just like in our schools and colleges, we have an experience that when we were in a particular class in a school, we are taught different things. There is well-defined curriculum. We study that classes are organized. And at the end of a particular semester or a year, 
an examination is conducted, an exam is conducted. And only if you pass the exam, you graduate to the next class, you get promoted to the next class. For example, if a child is in fourth class and if he or she passes the exam, the final exam, the annual exam, although there are many, so to say, other exams, quarterly exams could be there or internals could be there. In the final exam, when a child passes, he gets promoted to the fourth class or the, the next higher standard. So we are, we are there in the material world. We wanted to be the enjoyers, independent of the Lord. We are here and an opportunity is given. You want to be an enjoyer? Go ahead. You want to see beautiful forms? Go ahead. You want to hear beautiful music? Nothing to do with connection with the Lord? Go ahead. All the best. Because that's our desire. And we are adamant about it. We want it. Okay, go ahead. A facility is created. But, just like a child who is very, very, I want this, I want this. Father may say that it is not good for you. But if the child is adamant, the father may say, okay, go ahead. What can I say? What can I do? So same way this world is created where there are a lot of illusory pleasures we have come to become the enjoyers take the position of the Lord and fall prey to such illusory pleasures and get entangled or entrapped so like an examiner exam is given only if you pass you move to the next class there is no point in graduating a child or moving a child to the next standard if he does not know the subject if he is not conversant with what's taught in a particular class if he has not improved in his level of understanding of physics chemistry maths or any particular subject which is being taught there is no point him to raise him to the next class he'll be a big failure he'll not be able to understand the curriculum which is there in the next class. So that's how the educational system works. We go to a particular level, we are taught different things, there's a well-defined curriculum, we pass the exam, we move to the next level, we move to the next level, next level, next level. That's how we pass our 10th, we pass our 12th, we do our graduation and then you know, we are called so-called educated beings. Now, while giving exams also, you know, we, uh, an interview is conducted, okay, what is your qualification? What have you passed? Because different jobs require different qualification. For a person who has to do surgery in a hospital requires a qualification. The person has done MBBS or MD or MS. And only if he has that qualification, it makes sense for him to do surgery. Otherwise, Without that qualification, there will be havoc in the hospital. So, <clears throat> we have come in this world. Now, we have completely forgotten the Lord. We are entitled to be blissful in company of the Lord, in association of the Lord. Serve the Lord and in turn experience loving reciprocation from the Lord. Just like Arjuna was trying to serve Krishna and was experiencing the loving reciprocation of the Lord, the Lord, although He is the Lord, chose to become, become His chariot driver. So in the spiritual world, it is not that Lord is, the, even the example which I gave of a master and servant, in that example, master is just enjoying the service of the servant and servant is just merely a servant. Unlike that in the spiritual world, we the living beings are serving the Lord, glorifying the Lord. The Lord is in the center and Lord is not just sitting there enjoying our services. He also is very very busy. 
He is also very, very active. And he is busy in serving his devotees, in giving pleasure to his devotees. So there is a very nice, loving, reciprocal relationship between the Lord and his devotees. And to some extent, when we practice spiritual life, when we start developing our relationship with the Lord, we also start experiencing that loving reciprocation of the Lord. Many times people ask, have you seen the Lord? Can you show me God? Frankly speaking, the way a person wants to see God with his gross eyes may not be the right way of seeing the Lord. So many people saw the Lord in the battle of Kurukshetra, the Kauravas, but they did recognize that the Lord is supreme personality of Godhead Sri Krishna. They didn't recognize. So, <clears throat> so we, are, we are in the material world. So Maya, we have forgotten the Lord and the goal is to come back to the Lord. Because that is what is going to completely satisfy us, make us completely happy. And there has to be some checks and balances, some tests. For example, if everyone cannot get into IIT, everyone cannot get an engineering seat, so there are some tests so that only people who have the required ability, required qualification can go for that particular course, which is a common phenomena which, and which is not wrong. Lesser the number of seats, like IIT, J, lakhs of people write and only few seats are there. Harder is the test. Not easy for one to pass the test. So likewise, we are in this material world, we want pleasure. Yes, in illusion we fo pursue false pleasures, we get trapped. But assuming we wake up and we realize that by reading Gita, by associating with devotees, we realize that what are real pleasures, how I should pursue seeking happiness, and we start treading that path just like when you tread any path even in academics there are exams to check whether you have really assimilated the subjects which were taught and then you are graduated to the next level likewise Maya will give us various tests to check our devotion to check our love for Krishna various allurements, various temptations. And if we pass the test, we move to the next level. And just like the exam of the example of examination board, if we fail that exam, it's best we remain at that level and assimilate that subject. And only after we have assimilated them well, we pass the test, we move to the next level. That's how we have example of KT. Uh, you know, people, one subject, two pa subjects, if they fail, they have to pass that exam and then they move to the next level. So Maya's business is, for a devotee also, there are certain traps laid down by Maya, which is, again, examiner board is not wrong. It's part of the government machinery, educational machinery. It conducts exams. There's a lot of effort gone in setting in papers, in evaluation, declaring the results, compiling the results. So likewise, Maya Devi gives various tests in the form, as I mentioned, tests could be in the form of distraction, could allurements and various temptations to aspirants. And only if we pass the test, we move to the next level. So, as a devotee, we should not be scared of Maya. Yes, Maya is doing her duty. But if we are conscious of the Lord, Makchitta Sarvadurgani Mat Prasada Tarishyasi Krishna says, if you become conscious of me, 
You will cross over all obstacles of conditional life by my grace. So, <clears throat> Maya will give different tests. We don't have to be afraid. Now, another example which I have often shared in my talks is about a cow tied to a pole with a rope. Now, length of the rope can vary. If the length of the rope is practically zero, the cow is almost touching the pole, it has no freedom to move. The length of the rope could be 5 meters. So in 5 meters, the cow can move up and down, is having relatively some freedom. But beyond 5 meters, if it tries to go, the rope hold its, holds it back. Now there could be another cow which is tied to the same pole, maybe the length of the rope is 15 meters. It has relatively more freedom. So likewise, all of us... So somebody can be, like I gave example, somebody can be tied with a rope which is 1 meter. The freedom is quite less. So when we pass the exam offered to us by Maya, what happens? Just like when you pass the exam, you get promoted. We are blessed with some release from the clutches of Maya. The length of the rope increases. Visualize a scenario, a cow tied with three meters. Imagine now the cowman releases some more rope it becomes 5 meter. The cow has a much bigger radius to move around. So we all are entrapped when Maya will give different tests. If we pass the test, we, our freedom increases. We get, so to say, disentangled. We get liberated. In fact, we talk about mukti or moksha. We say, Goal of life is to achieve moksha. So, moksha is nothing but the rope is cut and you are completely free, liberated. Right now, that's not our scenario. We are completely entangled, we are completely bound, trapped. So, Maya Devi will give different tests. Now, if we are spiritually strong, if we have spiritual intelligence, if we have ability to discern, not fall into traps of Maya. If our mind is controlled, if our senses are regulated, if the example of chariot, the horses are tamed, then quite possible we will pass the test which Maya gives and we will move to the next level. Mind you, one more thing, the test of Maya, initially, when we begin spiritual life, they are quite gross. In other words, the tests are not very difficult to pass. But as we tread this path, the tests will become tougher and tougher. The test can become subtler. Subtler means finer. The traps can be much finer. For a spiritual aspirant, somebody who has renounced his family, house, you know, he is assuming in a renounced order of life, the traps could be very subtle in the form of puja, pratishtha, labha, name, fame, adoration. May not be very gross, may not be interested in money per se, but it could be subtle. Subtle means finer fame. He wants to become famous. He wants appreciation. People should admire his talks. These all are traps of Maya. So a spiritual aspirant should be cautious of these traps. Pass this test which Maya Devi offers and then we come closer to Krishna. We keep passing the tests of Maya, all the allurements, all the distractions, keep passing the test, keep steadily progressing and a time will come when we will come directly in association with Lord Shri Krishna and be engaged in loving 
devotional service and be fully and completely happy which is what we are trying to achieve so this is what is possible to achieve in human form of life that's why Prabhupada says pursuing spiritual life is like waging a war against Maya again a different scenario war means there's an enemy enemy wants to hit you enemy wants to kill you again depends on how we see this just an example so Maya which is energy of the Lord on behalf of the Lord wants to test us and wants to kill us now if we are sincere if we are serious if we are steadfast we will pass the test and come one step closer to the Lord so that way spiritual life is very interesting just like sometimes video games are very very interesting a person can get completely absorbed in that video game because always something is happening there it's not monotonous it's not very static it's dynamic the enemy is there you know you're shooting and then game is progressing you're getting points and then at times you get shot and then you realize from your mistakes you get up and then again you fight more enthusiastically it goes on and the game game becomes very many times people get addicted get so sucked into that game hours pass by so likewise a person who is aspiring to progress in spiritual life the life is very interesting the senses will try to trap us the mind will try to trap us there will be various allurements and there will be many pitfalls then aspirant is very alert then Prabhupada says a very nice example he says Shura means sharpened razor. Nowadays we have safety razors, we have gillette razors, you know, it's, it has twin blades and all that. It's relatively safe. We don't hear much of cuts. But typically when you go for a head shave to a barber, you know, you have that ustra. Uh, we generally get our head shaved. So, we know, we have uh, an understanding that typical barber shop, you have that blade. And... The barbers are quite well trained, so generally you don't get a cut. But otherwise, if a person is not careful, a moment inattention and there's a cut and the blood oozes out. So Prabhupada says, Shura means sharpened razor. If you are careful, you can cut it very nicely. If we are careful and we understand the traps of Maya, you can lead a very nice life and you can pursue pleasures without getting trapped that's very nice if you are not careful if you don't understand the traps of Maya you don't understand the pitfalls you don't understand what is illusion you are bereft of the knowledge which Krishna has shared in the Gita we simply go this is giving pleasure so I should just pursue that's animal life Animals act impulsively. You cannot tell the dog, today is Ekadashi, do not eat grains. You cannot say that, eat it tomorrow, today you fast. It cannot. It just helplessly acts based on the impulses from the senses and the mind. If we also just lead our life based on impulses from our senses and mind, we are polished animals. Human life affords us an opportunity to regulate, to control, to understand, to assimilate what is right, what is wrong, to discriminate, to make the right choices, to understand what are traps and not fall for those traps. So if you are not careful, immediately blood. So spiritual life is like that. As soon as you become little inattentive, as soon as you become little inattentive, just like I gave example of video game, little inattentive, you will get hit. You lose points. As soon as you become little inattentive, immediately Maya captures. Yes, come on, then everything is failure. So, <clears throat> to give you, just to conclude, so that we can have some question answers also. To conclude, it is energy of the Lord. Maya Devi is serving the Lord. It is servant of Lord Shri Krishna. Mama Maya Dhuratya. But it is 
its duty is to entangle to trouble to to so to say uh, <clears throat> make the life of a person who wants to defy the lord miserable mama maya dhurattaya but krishna says if you surrender to me mama maya which is very dhurattaya i will free you from that illusory energy because ultimately goal of life is to realize our mistake to purify our mind purify our senses purify our consciousness and go back to our original home the kingdom of god and enjoy real pleasure real bliss not illusory pleasures in association of the lord so <clears throat> so maya is there this is energy of the lord maya has various traps now it's like that examination board if we pass the test we move to the next level we keep moving next level next level next level and then we reach a level where we can enjoy the company of the lord face to face now the test is given so that there is no point in unqualified people who have aspiration to be the lord to go in front of the lord and be in that company it doesn't make sense so <clears throat> the tests are given and if we pass the test why should we pass the test what should be uh, so to say motivating us to pass the test because when we pass the test we get promoted so promoted we come closer to the lord we come closer to real pleasure we come closer to real bliss we come closer to real contentment we come closer to real happiness we come closer to the lord so maya will give different tests we pass the test graduate to the next level pass the test graduate to next level pass the test graduate to next level to to give that uh, sense i took the example of a cow tied to a pole the longer the rope more freedom it has so likewise longer the release from maya more freedom we have to act more freedom we have to enjoy real pleasures and that way human form of life is actually meant to purify and uh, come out of all these traps all this bondage all this entanglement and become liberated become really genuinely free we all want to be free we all want to be independent we all celebrate independence day 1947 when britishers left india we celebrated that day now we are independent actually true independence is when we become free from the traps of maya we we get independent from the traps of illusion that's real independence so we all can pursue that and uh, that is what opportunity we have in human form of life so i'll stop here take few questions <clears throat> if anyone has any questions based on what we discussed or even otherwise feel free to uh, write those questions and uh, i will be reading out the questions here i'll also uh, write the name of read the name of the devotee who has asked that question and see if i can answer that question <clears throat> this is satyam choudhary as we are part and parcel of the lord there would be a time when we got separated from the body of the lord then how can we be unborn part and parcel is not in the sense that we are part of the body of the lord krishna in the geeta says never ever was there a time when you did not exist i or any of these kings and never ever will there be a time in future when we will cease to exist so as atma we are amsha of the lord we are part and parcel of the lord we have a connection with the lord but we are not the lord we are not part of the body of the lord as atma we are individuals so in that sense when we are in the spiritual world we are part and parcel of the lord and engaged in loving service of the lord even now we are part and parcel of the lord 
but we have completely forgotten the Lord. So, yes, it's not that when we take birth, we get separated from the body of the Lord. Always we have been Atma, always existing as individuals, even in the past, currently and in future. Even when we get liberated, we don't get merged with the body of the Lord. Lot of people have an understanding that liberation means you merge with the Lord. No. Liberation means you get freed from illusion. Get freed from the wrong understanding that I am the Lord. Mukti hitva anyatha rupam swarupena vivasthitihi When a fish which is wriggling out of water put back in water, it is liberation for the fish because it is swarupena vivasthiti. It is very joyful, very happy because it is in natural habitat which is water. So we are currently in Maya wriggling like the fish out of water. It's not a natural habitat. We are in this material world. We see everyone is afraid of infection, there is anxiety, there is fear, there is death. We are struggling. A lot of people commit suicide. If not one kind of misery, there is another misery lined up. So what is mukti? Just like that fish, mukti is you put back in water, it's again, you know, it's a natural habitat. It's very blissful. So mukti means hitva anyatha rupam. When we give up the wrong conceptions, wrong understanding that I am the Lord, I am the controller, I am the master. And reinstate back in our original constitutional position that I am eternal servant of the Lord. That is mukti. So that way a person in this material world with pure consciousness can be mukta purusha. You don't have to go back to the spiritual world to achieve mukti. Even in this material world, even being in a family, we have examples of great devotees who are completely liberated. It's just a question of purification of our consciousness, reviving our original Krishna consciousness. Next question. How will we know Maya is checking or putting strap for us? Maya's duty is to check us, to just like I gave an example of examiner. Examiner's duty is not to fail you. Examiner is not, exam is not conducted to punish someone by failing them and making them repeat the exam. Examiner's main duty is to ensure that wrong people with no proper understanding should not unnecessarily graduate because it will be a nuisance if a child who is in fourth class who does not know the subjects of fourth class is not understood them, not assimilated them. If he goes in the fifth class, he will not be able to pass further. It will just be for the namesake. Other students, you know, it will be nuisance for them. So examination board is not to punish someone, not to fail someone. That's a different thing. Unfortunately, somebody who doesn't study, who doesn't do well in the exam has to stay back. So likewise, Maya's duty is not to trouble us. Yes, we have chosen to defy the Lord. We want to be enjoyers, which is not our true position. So just like I gave example of servant. Imagine a servant forgets that he is a servant starts cooking whatever he wants to eat and even before considering feeding or giving serving the master he starts eating this is not the right thing to be done do you think the master if he comes to know about it he will keep that servant in the house for long no so maya's duty is to check us to give the right tests and we should not as i mentioned we should not be afraid of the test we should have hope that yes, these tests are good for me and when I pass the test, I move to the next level. You have any questions? Please explain what is Swadharma in current world. Does Gita, this is from Bala Ganesh, 
Please explain what is Swadharma in current world. Does Gita support completely abstaining from normal worldly duties and dedicate only to spiritual duties out of frustration, fear of regular duties? Gita does not support at all abstaining from our duties. In fact, if you can see the whole teachings of Krishna to Arjuna is to inspire him, to motivate him, to do his duty. He as a Kshatriya, Arjuna as a Kshatriya, as a warrior, as a family man, his duty was to fight. We will not get into why he should fight, was the battle righteous, right, wrong, let us not get into that now. As a Kshatriya, it was his duty. He was reluctant to execute that duty. In fact, he said that, let me beg and uh, somehow live. I don't want to fight. Krishna spoke the Gita to inspire him, to motivate him, to not shun or not run away from his duty. So that way, nowhere in the Gita, nowhere in our Vedic literatures, it is recommended that we shun our duties and dedicate only to spiritual duties. I understand if the question is coming, then why I am sitting here in this dress after having done my engineering? Why can't I be an engineer working in some company, getting married, have a family and do my duty? I will come to that. So, <clears throat> yes, it is possible for a person who is doing his regular duties, normal duties, to simultaneously also cultivate spiritual life and do his spiritual duties. It is not out of fear or frustration of his regular duties. A lot of people think spirituality means people who have per have gone into spiritual life, they have got frustrated doing their normal duties and they have so to say ejected themselves, escaped from those duties and they have chosen an easy path. Having, before having said this, let me tell you, I can very confidently say for a person who is practicing spiritual life, his life is much tougher. Sometimes people get an impression that it's a very easy going life. Morning you get up, you do your chanting, then have your prasadam. You don't have to have any tension, any stress. You don't have to go to office. You don't have a boss to report to. You don't have to worry about financial pressures. You get donations. You have well-wishers. You have donors. Eat, drink, sleep, dance, have prasadam, be merry and enjoy life. You are running away from the realities of the life. No doubt, spiritual life is very pleasurable. Devotees definitely relish. Prabhupada says, so if that is the case, if you feel that it is so relishable, why don't you come and join? What stops you? But the fact remains that it is not a easy going life. Typically, devotee's life in our movement, the day starts as early as 3.30 a.m. or even before that. All of us assemble in the temple hall 365 days in a year at 4.15 in the morning without fail. We don't have weekends. We don't have national holidays. We don't have weekly offs. Sometimes devotees, we joke among ourselves. You know, how many holidays, how many weekly off. We don't have anything like that. Day after day, day after day, getting up at 3 a.m. At times, because of, you know, various engagements, we may even sleep as late as 9.45, 10, 10.30, sometimes at 11, the devotees who are involved in youth preaching. Because people generally come back home from work at 9 a.m., 9 p.m. You can't uh, say that, okay, it's my sleeping time. If you have to talk to them, if you have to conduct some classes, that's a more convenient time. So, and throughout the day, we all have different engagement which keeps us very busy. So, it's not an easy going life where, yes, there is, you shun from the realities of life and then you take an easy path. No. 
there is uh, there is a lot of challenges and uh, it's not out of frustration. This question is from Yashas Mane. Hare Krishna Prabhu, Maya acts as per order of Supreme Lord. Then what's wrong to accept Maya? If Maya is wrong or bad, then why are we worshipping Goddess Durga Devi? Is it good to worship Durga Devi? <coughs> Durg means, what is the meaning of Durg? Durg means fort. Fort, so when you are in a fort, it's difficult to escape from the fort because huge walls, tall walls, and then it's well guarded from all sides. So this material world is also called Durg. Durga means it's very difficult to come out of this Durg or this material existence. Now, just like in a jail, in a prison house, there is a jail superintendent whose duty is to ensure that the prisoners are kept captive, they don't escape. And in the prison house, if we have to, you have to have good relationship with the jail superintendent. Otherwise, if you try to mess up with him, he can mess up your life very badly. So, even in this material world, the goddess who is overseeing this material existence, who is in charge of this material world is Durga Devi, which is again energy of the Lord. And we have Durga Puja and all that because so long as we are in the material world, we want material. I mean, that's again under the influence of Maya. Dhanam Dei, Janam Dei, we all have so many material desires. So we try to please Durga Devi. So that all the amenities what we want in the prison house, not realizing we are in the prison house, hoping that I will be happy in this prison house, we ask for various facilities. We try to, so to say, uh, appease or please Durga Devi. But Durga Devi's function is to keep us captive in this material world, which is also called Durg. So, <clears throat> we should try to ensure that we have the right understanding of who the Lord is, who the different Devatas are, and accordingly worship them, accordingly offer our prayers. This question is from Preeti Narang. <clears throat> Hare Krishna Swamiji, what if the person understands all this and is struggling to progress on spiritual path and still does not succeed, still gets lured by Maya? <clears throat> it's a good question. Just like a child, a, a baby who wants to walk, we all have an experience. We have seen, you know, very young babies, they are somehow crawling on the bed and then a time comes when they start you know standing on the legs and they fall miserably it's part of the process when the child tries to get up it will fall it takes two steps again it will fall what does the parent do the parents encourage the child it doesn't start shouting at the screaming at the child why did you fall it encourages motivates the child again the child gets up starts walking a time comes when the child stops falling or rather stops falling that frequently and a time comes when the child starts walking. So even because we are in traps of Maya, we have no understanding, we are in illusion, we are in ignorance. When we come to this knowledge, we start walking. But because we are not in complete knowledge, because we are not yet got fully purified, we will fall down. It's like a child. So we should not get disheartened, we should not be impatient. What does a child do? Again he gets up and again tries to walk. Same way Maya will give a test, we will fall trap, we may fail the test, we again get up, we learn from our mistakes, again want to walk. And if we do that, a time will come when we learn to walk without falling. A time will come when we will start running. 
So that's how we should proceed in our spiritual life. There's a question from Shiva Kumar. Hare Krishna Prabhu, if there is some gratification that comes without any external endeavor, how do we understand it? Can we consider it as a sanction of the Lord and allow? Please throw some light on it. So the question is, what if we talked about sensual pleasure? What if some sensual pleasure comes to you without you pursuing it madly? Is it wrong to enjoy such pleasures? First and foremost, what I mentioned was that we have our senses and the senses are untamed. And today's understanding of in ignorance when we are in Maya, our understanding is if my senses come in contact with the sense objects, I will become more and more happy. That's how if you see a typical mall or typical, you know, go to a grocery shop, more so in present times, you will have shelves and shelves of different kinds of, you know, numkeens and biscuits and all those things which will titillate your tongue. Now, mind you, it's very good for tongue. Pringles, you know, some 20 different flavors. It's very good for the tongue. It's very enticing. That's why these days they call it fast food. You just pick up that and start eating. You know, it's so good for the tongue. But there's a saying, that which is good for the tongue may not be good for your belly. And that's how you have these days a lot of people having lifestyle diseases. Eating junk food and messing up their health, messing up their lives. People at the age of 30, 35, 40 having, you know, heart diseases, diabetes, hypertension, whole lot of things. A lot to do with what we are eating. So, <clears throat> in spiritual life, we are not meant to not enjoy our senses. In other words, Krishna is not giving impractical advice that do not see anything which is pleasurable. Krishna is not giving an impractical device, advice that do not eat anything which is pleasing for your tongue. No. Krishna is not saying that do not hear anything, otherwise you will get trapped. You will fall in Maya. No. There are negative pleasures. In other words, there are pleasures which will trap you. Just like knife. Is it good or bad? If you know the right use of knife, you can save a life. A surgeon using the knife can operate and can save a person's life. The same knife in the hand of a terrorist can take away a life. It can kill a person. Knife per se is not good or bad. Depends on how we use it. Sense enjoyment per se is not good or bad. If we pursue sense enjoyment thinking that this is real pleasure keeping completely lord out of picture that sense gratification becomes a cause of our bondage but bona fide sense pleasure for example we also eat we also eat nice prasadam we cook nice dishes offer to the lord eat some nice our, our prasadam is not completely bland tasteless you know, we don't eat only boiled rice and some bland vegetables without salt. No, our prasadam is quite good, quite tasty, quite nutritious. So there are bona fide pleasures which the Lord has sanctioned for our senses. If we want to hear, instead of hearing sounds which can, can, can entrap us, can pull our consciousness down, there are sounds which can really pull our consciousness down, which is not good for our self-interest, we can hear the right kind of sounds. We can hear the right kind of music. We can hear right kind of melodious music, which can uplift us, uplift our consciousness. So, if such pleasures fall on our senses, such bona fide pleasures, we should not feel uh, wrong about it. Suppose somebody offers nice prasadam, it is offered to the Lord. 
we should not shy away from it thinking that i will fall in maya i should not enjoy my tongue no it is a bona fide pleasure it's a positive pleasure and we should seek it this is question from shirish sangle how to balance spiritual and professional goals of life is it possible to have such a trade off <clears throat> again everyone's situation is unique everyone's situation is different as i gave an example the cow tied to a pole 3 meters 5 meters 8 meters 10 meters the amount of freedom the cow has to move freely is different depending on the length of the rope somebody can be in a particular occupation and entangled to such an extent where freedom is very less even if he wants to pursue spiritual life practically the environment the circumstances does not permit now that does not mean so in other words it it can be likened to a cow which is tied to a pole with 2 meters of rope but that does not mean that a cow always have to be tied with 2 meters rope there are cows which are left loose in the field to graze there are cows which are tied with 10 meters length of rope now what we have to understand is the length of the rope by which we are tied whatever compelling circumstances we may be in which may be favorable or unfavorable first we have to realize it is our doing so i think there was some uh, uh, break because of uh, connection issues so i repeat the cow tied to 3 meters 5 meters 10 meters rope if suppose somebody is situation that he is in a job where he is not having much freedom it's finding it difficult to balance material and spiritual life and you know manage both possibly that the length of the rope is less but that does not mean that there are no cows which have much bigger freedom to move in fact there are cows which are free to graze so what we have to do is first we have to realize whatever situation we may be in it's because of the choices we have made in the past we are entangled to different degrees hum maya jal mein phase hue hain to different degrees but the lord is very kind if we make the right choices now with whatever freedom we have currently if it is 3 meters rope the lord is very very merciful he will he will ensure that the length of the rope becomes longer in other words we have to be patient we do the best we can in our present circumstances when the lord sees that yes we are doing the best we can he changes our circumstances and we have to always be patient with that and uh, yes it is possible while we are pursuing our material duties we can do fairly well again there are limitations there are challenges we can fairly do well to balance the two and pursue also the spiritual practices genuinely this is a question from anup gupta ji is spirituality not selfish because one is concerned with his own soul though in relationship with the lord and not in relationship with other souls it is not selfish in the sense just like when we travel by air uh we all get demonstration of safety measures you know the air hostess we have those they say when the oxygen levels dip the mask will fall from the top before you try to help others ensure you put the mask tightly so our scriptures also say human life is not meant to be selfish janma sarthak kari karo upakar but before you can do paropakar if a person is sinking 
there is no point in doing paropakar. Even in present times, coronavirus pandemics, the doctors and nurses who are getting infected, they are not allowed to treat patients. Wherever doctors have got this thing, they have got quarantined. In fact, hospitals have got closed. Because unless you are safe and unaffected, how can you help others? So in spiritual life, for example, let's say in the aircraft, oxygen levels fall down. It is not selfish that first you put your mask. So to some extent, it might appear selfish that I am putting my mask before helping others. But you put mask, you secure yourself, you come out of maya. You come out of illusion, you come in knowledge. And when we are in knowledge, we are in better position to help others. That's why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Janma Sarthak Kari Karopakar. First, do your life while you are doing Janma Sarthak Kari. There might be a feeling of selfishness that I am just engaged in Janma Sarthak Kari, my, my own purification. I am not helping others. There might be a phase where it appears that I am very selfish, I am just interested in my spiritual growth. But if we are on this path, naturally, Janma Sartak Kari Karopkar will be inspired to not only help ourselves, but help others. But before we help others, we should be on secure ground. If a person is drowning, the ship has capsized. If a person is drowning, is almost you know, getting sunk, he cannot save safeguard others. He cannot help others. Even if he tries to, he'll pull someone down. So first is, he safeguards himself, he protects himself, comes on the ship and while he is safe, he tries to help others and pull others. So there is an element of selfishness. It appears so, but we should try to purify our lives, come out of Maya's trap, and see if we can also help others. This is a question by Pooja Vijay Raj. Hare Krishna Prabhu, if we are continuously changing our bodies in this lifetime from being child unto old age, how is it that we remember our childhood days and not past lives? Again, many things are designed by the Lord what happens after birth, what we remember, what we don't remember. There's some scheme of things, some design, the creator, the Lord who has created this creation. Yes, we can remember, the Lord can make us remember our previous lives. It will be utter confusion. In fact, there are many movies made on the confusion which ensues, ensues by a person remembering just one of his previous lives. At least today we can confidently say, I am a male, I am an Indian. Imagine we as soul have taken many, many lives. If Lord had not made that arrangement of we forgetting our previous lives, we will be completely confused. They are called split personalities. A person is not sure what he is. He acts like a split person. There is a technical term, I don't know the details. There's a, a psychiatric problem, split personality. So, yes, childhood days we remember because it makes sense. As Atma, we have moved from that body and childhood memories help us. That's the design. Unless I remember who is my father, mother, how I was taken care of, how they helped me, how will I you know, exp express my gratitude to them? So that memories help. But previous life, if we were to remember, there will be utter confusion. And as per the design of the Lord, we generally forget. Next question. It's Ruchi uh, D. Kumar. To move ahead in Krishna consciousness, we have to reduce the effect of Maya, but we cannot totally stay away from Maya. So how to use Maya positively and continue this path? That's why, yes, you are right, we cannot completely, uh, all of a sudden, come out of Maya, more so if we are in Grihastha Ashram, we are married, living with family and all that. Yes, so that's why in every Ashrama, there are some rules and regulations. Even in Grihastha Ashrama, sense gratification is allowed. 
sensual pleasures are allowed in a regulated way. So if we follow the regulations, rules and regulations of different ashramas and lead regulated life, Krishna also says in the Gita, one who is regulated in his eating, sleeping, recreation and work. Recreation. Regulated. We all, using common sense, can draw some boundaries. If we are just recklessly, without any discerning, just watching television, show after show, movie after movie, serial after serial, then that will not help. We have to exercise caution and regulation. Yes, we can watch television, but using our intelligence, we can decide what shows I should watch, what I should not watch. Yes, being in home, we cannot completely give up eating things. Yes, but we have to use our intelligence using whatever we have learned from Gita, what I should be eating, what I should be avoiding. What will be spiritually uplifting? What will be spiritually sapping? We may not be able to avoid altogether. At least we can minimize. We, we, we stop avoiding going backwards. We may not move forward very fast. At least we can stop moving backwards. We can try not moving backwards. This question is from Sunil Kumar. As ghost Pretas and psychic phenomena part of Maya or our spiritual essence of soul that is beyond Maya constructed world. Hare Krishna. What are ghosts? Before I answer this question, what is ghost? Maybe this is last question or one more question. Ghosts are souls who do not have gross body. We have a gross body made of panchabhuta, earth, air, water, fire and ether. And there is sukshma sharira, subtle body made of manas, buddhi and ahankara. If a person is very sinful, the soul may not get a gross body after death. But still has a subtle body made of manas, buddhi and ahankara that soul is called a ghost. The question is, are ghosts, pretas and psychic phenomena part of Maya or spiritual essence of the soul that's beyond Maya constructed world? First, I have not fully comprehended the question and hence, because we are left with very little time, I will not be able to give a proper answer. I am sorry. This question is from Nitin Nayak. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Prabhuji, in what way Maya affects in Grihastha life? Prabhuji, in what way Krishna consciousness to practice in Grihastha life? So there are a lot of uh, uh, rules and regulations. Uh, if we read Prabhupada books, he shares with us many do's and don'ts. And as I mentioned, spiritual life involves we can take guidance from devotees. We can discuss with them some practical scenarios and take their guidance. We can also use common sense. Like I gave example now. In the house we may have a lot of things which we can buy and eat. Using the instructions which Krishna is sharing, using common sense, we can discern to some extent what we should eat and what we should not eat. We are watching television. We can use our intelligence, use common sense and understand what I should watch and what I should not watch. Likewise for all the senses. Something is by common sense. Something is by what we study in Prabhupada's books. And something where still we have a doubt, we can take guidance of experienced devotees. So that way uh, we will have you know, much more better understanding of what are the do's and don'ts in Grahastha life. So thank you very much. Thanks for joining us today for this particular session. Uh, see you next Sunday, same time, 4.30 p.m. Please chant Hare Krishna Mahamantra more and more and be happy. Hare Krishna. Thank you.